Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. So most of the videos online today kind of walk you through programming uh, in Ethereum using languages like JavaScript. This video, we're gonna go over using the Go programming language written and maintained by Google. And we're just gonna go ahead and try and connect to a node and get some information from the Ethereum network. So let's dive right into it. All right, as I've mentioned before, most of the tutorials you'll find online have to do with working with JavaScript to create decentralized applications on the Ethereum network. In this video, I'm going to specifically focus on the Go programming language in order to create decentralized applications because I feel it's kind of an underutilized language when it comes to building dApps. What most people don't realize is that Geth, the most popular Ethereum client that you can run on your system, is actually written in Go. And the source code is available online on GitHub. You can actually build the client from the source code uh, from scratch if you like to, rather than actually just download the binary. And what you also get with the source code is a bunch of Go packages that you can pull into your own projects and use in building your own decentralized applications. So let's go ahead and see how we can actually connect to an Ethereum node and then pull down some information using the Go program. Also, we're going to open our editor here. As you can see, I've just got a single main.go file. If you're not familiar with Go, this isn't really a tutorial on the Go programming language, so you might want to go ahead and familiar yourself with the Go programming language before you actually view this video. But those who are familiar with Go will understand what is actually going on here. And I'll briefly go through it, but I won't really explain it in depth. So we've got the main package, then I've got a bunch of imports. So these are a bunch of packages that I'm going to be using in this particular code sample. So we've got context, the format, and then the log for printing and then logging some stuff. Um, and then we've also imported the Ethereum packages from the official GitHub page. So we've got this common package and this F client package. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is to instantiate a client that's connected to an Ethereum node. And then once we have that client instantiated, we can go ahead and pull down some information. So what we're going to do is create a connection variable and then an error variable. And then we're going to use this F client package and it has a function called dial. And then all you do with dial is just give it the URL or the IP address or um, even an IPC um, file handle in order to connect to an Ethereum client. So we're not going to actually run our own Ethereum client. I could spin up like something like test RPC or uh, parity or something like that. But instead, we're going to use a really cool service called Infura. And Infura is a service created by the Ethereum team. Um, actually, I want to say it's yeah, so it's created by Consensus, which is basically the official arm of Ethereum. Um, and it's a free service with Ethereum nodes running for the mainnet, testnet, um, a couple of other testnet. They also have an IPFS node. Um, they allow you to connect to it for free, so you don't actually have to run your own node. But you do have to, if you do want to do anything significant, you do have to sign up and then get an API key and then... They give you like a little key to add to the end of your URL and you can actually do more bandwidth intensive things. But in this case, we're not going to use an API key. We're just going to connect to it directly. So the URL we're going to use is HTTPS mainnet.infura.io and that should be all we need. Next thing we're going to do is just do a quick check for errors. So most people familiar with Go are familiar with this, um, this pattern. So if error is not equal to nil, we want to handle that. So we're just going to log and then fatal. And then uh, we're going to say 
Whoops. Something went wrong. And then just log the error. And then the next thing we're going to do is simply use this new connection variable that we've created. The simplest thing we're going to do is we're just going to search for a, a transaction hash and then pull that uh, the information from that transaction. So let's, let's check out Etherscan right here. Let's do a refresh. So here is a transaction. Yeah, let's we'll take the top one. We're just going to copy that. And so what we're going to do is use a method called uh, transaction from hash. And uh, it returns three um, variables. So the first variable it's going to be is the transaction. Um, and then a true or a Boolean, um, true or false, depending on whether or not the transaction is pending or completed. So if it's pending, it'll be true. And also um, returns an error. In this case, we're going to be lazy um, and not care about the error. And then in Go, um, you can actually ignore variables by just giving this little underscore thing right here. So we're just going to ignore the error for now. So we just, this is just a simple demonstration. So we're going to use this connection and then we're going to use transaction by hash. Oh, I forgot one other thing. Transaction by hash, because it is a uh, concurrent method or a concurrent process, it'll actually send this call out and run it in the background on its own. So Go is a very concurrent language. It's able to run a bunch of different functions and processes all at the same time, which is a really cool, flexible thing. But one way working it complicated is whether or not you want to cancel uh, a certain Go routine depending on something happening. So if you go and fire off a Go routine, you're not able to do anything with that Go routine because it's basically out of your hands at that point. So the, the Go programming gurus created a context package. And context is a way to pass a bit of information to a Go routine, but gives you um, access to it while that Go routine is running. And so you can do things like cancel, restart, pause, that kind of thing. So this transaction by hash also takes a context and uh, we're just going to give it a simple context dot background. So this is just a, a background context and we don't care about canceling or anything like that. We're just, we want a simple context to pass to this, this function. So it's going to take a context and it's also going to take that transaction hash, but um, it needs to actually be encoded into hex. Um, luckily, the common package comes with a bunch of utilities. So we're going to use this hex to hash and then just paste in that transaction hash. And that should be it. So we're going to do one quick check. So we're going to make sure if the transaction is not pending, we want to go ahead and print out the information from that transaction. So that looks good. We're going to go ahead and run this. So go run main.go. Give it a little time to compile and boom. So we have our transaction. So it's telling us that this is not a contract related transaction. This is telling us who the transaction is from and then who the transaction is to um, and a bunch of other stuff. So let's go ahead and check Etherscan to make sure that that is actually correct. You've got things like your nonce value right here, 209108, 209108. You've got to and from. So from right here is the same as up here. Um, so everything looks like it worked out. And that's it. 
I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button if you're brand new here. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button and have uh, notifications turned on so you can stay up to date when I post new content. And I'm also going to try and end this video with a little something different. Uh, something I just thought of right now. Stay funky.